Scott Jensen, and most of the time I do livestock stuff, but I do have done over the course of my life a lot of camping and and um, really enjoy the outdoors. And, and so with that, I've done a fair bit of Dutch oven cooking. All right, so just uh, for those of you who may not be so familiar with the extension, the, the kind of the mission of the University of Idaho Extension is to bring the, the knowledge and research of the university to the local people. And so no matter you know, where you are, when, when it's convenient for you, whatever, we, we try to help um, bring that or make that information, bring information and, and help in any way we can with, with education. Um, we do have uh, quite a few extension offices around the state, 42 in, in Idaho's 44 counties. And the, the couple of counties that don't have an office are still um, fortunate because there are educators that are assigned that kind of work in a, a couple of county, a couple of different counties. So today we're gonna highlight uh, a little bit, at least part of uh, our mission with a short video. And I'll go ahead and play that. University of Idaho Extension is helping to shape the food systems and landscapes of Idaho for the future. From home gardening education to solutions for short season and high altitude gardening, fire resistant plants and pest and disease management, UI Extension is growing and cultivating a better future. Okay, so moving on, just a, a little bit about myself. Like I mentioned, I'm a mostly do livestock range and pasture man management work. Um, everything from teaching artificial insemination to some various uh, applied research projects that are beef cattle and range related and a whole lot of stuff in between. I also want to um, just introduce my trusted assistant today. I don't know, can you step over here, Jordan? So this is Jordan Einick and he is uh, already, I think has a fan base from the last time he came and helped make some jerky. So anyway, Jordan's gonna be helping me out today as we make some sticky buns. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna stop this and I'm gonna change the camera over to uh, that one. Give you a view of the, the Dutch oven, but, but essentially we're gonna make some sticky buns and um, the way that I've always done it's in a Dutch oven. I know that it's possible if you're just doing it at home in the house, whatever, you could use some kind of different round pan but uh, we're gonna be doing a Dutch oven and, and talking a little bit about that. And so um, one of the first things, I like to start with the oven just a little bit warm. We're doing it inside today. Normally I would have maybe made a, well, if I was camping for sure, I'd be outside, but um, gonna do it inside. I've got one of Serene's uh, butane little tabletop burners. So we're trying to keep it all safe, keep from burning our building down and keep away from the noxious fumes. So, but anyway, we're gonna use that to get us some heat and get going, but all right. So sticky buns are really pretty simple and we're gonna just start off, go ahead and throw that butter in there, Jordan. So we're gonna start off with uh, just a cube of butter. And um, my opinion needs to be some real butter. We don't want any fake stuff in here. If you're trying to make a treat that's, that's gonna be really, really tasty. And so using good ingredients right off is gonna help that out. But we need to, kind of the idea here, we wanna melt that butter without burning it. And so this is a step where you, you really need to watch the heat a little bit and um, you know we don't want to be all day but at the same time we sure don't want to to burn the butter and so he's stirring it around and melting and then when it's about 
pretty close to melted. Then I'm going to to um, add the cup and a half of half and half. Now you could use a lot of different things, but I've found over the over the years of making sticky buns that that using something that's got a little more cream to it. I mean, I could I could just use milk, but the milk doesn't tend to stay together. It's just not as creamy, caramely as sauce on it, and so I really like to use something with a little more cream to it. So the butter's just about melted. I'm gonna go ahead and add the cup and a half of cream or of half and half. And then from there, while well, Jordan keeps stirring, we've got a cup and a half of brown sugar. I'll add that in and about a half a cup of white granulated sugar. Now, ordinarily, um, I wouldn't do it this way because I'm the kind of guy when I'm cooking, I just like to, I don't measure too often, especially on something like this. And so I kind of approximate, but um, that's, you'll see, that's what I'll do with the vanilla. We're going to add a little bit, eh, a teaspoonish of vanilla. And then the last thing to add would be some cinnamon. Now, how much cinnamon you add just really kind of depends on your preferences. Now, I like a lot of cinnamon, but some of the people in my house don't care for it as much. I have two foreign exchange students currently, and neither one are very big fans of cinnamon. And so got that going. Jordan's going to stir it. And then basically what needs to happen is that we need to bring it to, uh, we want to get it to just a, a really low boil. And so the part of the purpose of that is that it's going to help the, the sugar and the milk. It's going to help all those ingredients really to combine well. We don't really want to cook it much here other than just get things you know, combined well because most of that cooking is going to take place when they're actually, um, when we actually put them in the Dutch oven and, and um, or add the coals, add the heat source to the oven after they've had a chance to raise. And so... Uh, can I interrupt you? Speaking of cooking, is this a recipe that we can um, use in the oven? So it is. You don't have a Dutch. Yeah, it is the recipe you could use in the oven. It's the same, um, same recipe. I personally, I well, I've done it in the oven a few times, and and it works just as well in the oven as it does in a Dutch oven. The whole, um, I mean, realistically, if you're not terribly familiar with a Dutch oven, we're just trying to recreate what goes on in an oven as we cook stuff. And so we get, we're gonna use some heat below, we're gonna use some heat above. And, um, and so it'll cook uh, kind of similarly uh, with, a, with a few little tweaks. Uh, we have a lot, we don't have quite the same consistency as far as heat and we just a, a lot more variables in there, okay? and. So if we take a day like today, it's been pretty wet and rainy in Marsing. And uh, most of the day we've had some, we've had some slow steady rains, we've had some pretty hard rains and we've had a bit of wind. And so if you're trying to cook in a Dutch oven outside, you know, with varying conditions like that, then it, it can make things a little bit challenging. So, so it looks like things are fairly well combined. I'm going to grab the the rolls. Now, I, I like to use mostly for uh, purpose of ease. I use some Rhodes frozen dinner rolls, and I'll add those. Yeah, so 
we're I'm going to turn the heat off because I I think we've got everything combined good. But in a this Dutch oven that Jordan's using is a 12 inch Dutch oven. This happens to be a 12 inch deep one, but uh, I have some sticky buns already cooking that are in a 12 inch shallow. It it's gonna they they work the same. To, the capacity is a little different, so that's about it. But the the key from now, as we add the, the rolls, is to just roll them around pretty good. We want everything to be covered uh, with the with the sauce here. Um, And a 12 inch Dutch oven is just the right capacity for about a, a 36 count bag of frozen rolls. And so he's, he's just gonna stir those around and then he'll, um, once they're all covered with, with the caramel sauce, then we'll just put a lid on the Dutch oven and then it's time to just kick back and and wait for it to raise. I like to I like to let them raise probably till they're double in size, and then um, cook from there. So while he's working on that, let me just uh, talk a little bit about the how do you how do you know on the heat of a Dutch oven. If you're using charcoal, you're out camping using charcoal, how do you know how much charcoal to use? It's a good question. I, we're trying to, we're gonna try to cook these sticky buns at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So how do we make a Dutch oven 350 degrees? Well, the kind of the general rule of thumb on a Dutch oven is that if you take the diameter of the oven, so this happens to be a 12 inch, take the diameter and use the plus three minus three rule. So if you get some charcoal started, you're gonna put on a 12 inch Dutch oven, if you put three additional charcoal briquettes on the lid, above what the diameter is. So a 12 inch Dutch oven would have 15 charcoal briquettes on the lid and minus three on the bottom. So that'd be nine underneath. That gets you to approximately 325 degrees. Okay, so plus three minus three, using the diameter as your guide that gets you to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And then from there, every briquette you add, top and bottom, will get you about 20 to 25 additional degrees, okay? So on a cooler day like today, I would probably add a couple, two or three additional briquettes, um, both top and bottom, knowing that I'm gonna lose a little bit of heat because of the wind and, and all of that. So that, that's kind of the rule. I, when you go to start cooking, I'm gonna, I want that charcoal to be mostly, mostly white. So those briquettes start black and as they get heated up and start burning, they start to turn white. You get a little ash layer around the outside. You would like them to be mostly, mostly white when you get started. Okay, and then I use some tongs or a shovel, something like that, to place the, the briquettes underneath. And you want to try to have it on somewhat of a of a level surface. Okay. So I'm gonna, it looks like those are all coated well. So we're gonna put a lid on that pot. And then I have another pot that we made a little bit earlier, and I want to um, I don't, I haven't lifted the lid recently, so we'll just take a look and see if they have, how much they've raised. 
So we'll put that, go ahead and cover that one up. So one of the, you notice I'm being a little, uh, grabbing that, that metal part is called the bale. I'm grabbing that a little gingerly because there's potential that it could be pretty hot. So a better would be to use, you know, maybe a, a Dutch oven tool like this. Uh, it'll got a deal where you can hook it underneath and, and lift the lid. And you can also hook that bale and lift it with that. So that's that's the wiser way to do it or a good pair of leather gloves. But uh, I have grabbed those before and they've been pretty dang hot. So I, I don't advise that one. So we're setting that one aside to raise. We're gonna bring this one back over and take a look at it. And it's, you should be able to see it's, uh, I would say it's about halfway there. So they have started to raise, but uh, I'm gonna guess that probably needs about another 30 minutes before they're gonna be ready to cook, okay? But they're, they're getting there, they just need a little bit more time. Now I've got a pot in the oven and I, I am, like I mentioned, it's been pouring a lot of rain here today. And so I'm doing, I'm cheating a little bit and using it in, uh, using the Dutch or using the Dutch oven in the oven so that I don't have to deal with the wet ground and, and the rain showers that make it really difficult on the charcoal. And so um, I'm going to... I don't know if it'll be ready or not. I need to go take a peek under the lid, but I'm gonna take a quick look and see if they're anywhere close. I actually do have a question for you. Um, so are there any calories in this recipe? <laughs> are there many calories in this recipe? No, none at all. <laughs> none at all, of course. <laughs> okay, so the, the one in the oven, is really close to being done. So yeah, the one that's that I've had in the oven is really close to being done. It, like Serene just put it, it, it's starting to smell pretty darn good in our meeting room. And so I'm gonna take a little chance on it. If it wasn't, if we weren't kind of on a time uh, crunch here, I'd probably let it go another five minutes. But I'm gonna take a chance and uh, go ahead and pull it out and show you, demonstrate for you how I, how I serve it. And so give me just a few seconds and I'll grab it. I actually did bring some leather gloves just to be able to do this, but um, I'm gonna grab that and I'll, we'll slide the stuff, switch back to the other camera and then we'll slide the stuff down here and, and be able to show you. So while you're doing that, we have another question. Um, so earlier, did he say the home oven should be at 350, 350 degrees? Also, how long in the home oven sink? So it generally is going to be probably 40 minutes, roughly, give or take. I cook them until they're just kind of golden brown on the top. Um, the risk is if they're not quite done in the center and you, when you go to flip them over and do the big aha moment, um, sometimes if they're not totally done, the center sinks. So this is, this is pretty risky now to do this in front of a, of anybody, <laughs> especially because I would, I seriously would let it cook just a, a little bit longer, but I'm going to go ahead and, and pull it out and see. You know, I have found that even if they're just a touch on the doughy side, uh, other than myself, very few complaints amongst uh, family and friends. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it out, grab it. All right. So the moment of truth. Let me show you first. If I, I'm afraid to melt stuff. I'm gonna grab 
grab this lid so that it'll keep me from melting the table for a minute. And when I pull off the lid, that's what they're looking like inside right now. And so they really are um, kind of perfect on this side, not quite so much on the other, but I, I have confidence they're, they're probably done and ready. So when I go to serve them, um, the big aha is when you flip these and then uh, all of the caramel just kind of runs down over them and, and it looks delicious. So in order to do that, one, if you're cooking with charcoal, the first thing you have to do is get all the coals off the lid. Definitely don't want charcoal in your sticky buns, but I'm going to take it, just flip it like that. We're going to have caramel all over the table, I bet. But then I grab it, pull it off, and aha, look, they didn't even sink in the middle. So they're done perfectly. Way to go, Jordan. Except for the caramel on the table, I'm pretty sure Serene's going to help me clean up. <laughs> then uh, that's what they look like, the finished product. So what do I like to do from there? I like to take some, my favorite is to have some cream cheese frosting. And so these things will just flake apart. You can... Take your fork or whatever, and look at that. Anybody hungry? Anybody wish they were here now? Okay, so you can just flake them apart like that, put a little cream cheese frosting on it, let it melt in, and, um, and then enjoy. And like I said, there's almost no calories at all involved, I'm sure, and, but, uh, they can, they're really simple. They can be a, just a camp favorite and, or any other activity you've got going on. They're just a lot of fun and, and um, delicious too. But I will give you my contact information if you ever have any, any questions, anything I can help with. And then again, there's the, the QR code for the, the survey. So any questions that I can answer or tell stories about? We do not have questions unless um, someone would like to drop some in. All right, well, thanks everybody for joining us and um, hopefully you'll give that a try and, and I wish you good luck. <laughs>